To create a new brush from scratch, enter the brush menu by tapping on an already active tool and then tap New Pack and then New Inside a Pack. To edit a brush, tap on it while active or tap Edit Brush from up here. In this video, we'll focus on the two main brush types as well as stamps and grains, which allow you to add texture to your brush. I'll start by increasing the width and lowering the opacity of the brush to help demonstrate. The default stamp is a simple black dot, and you can already see how we're building the stroke by repeating the dot along the path drawn on the preview screen. The key difference between the two brush types, stamp and reveal, is in how individual stamps overlap one another along a single stroke, which becomes apparent at lower opacities. With the stamp type, they overlap, and I can build up the opacity with a single stroke. With the reveal type, the overlap doesn't happen, and the stamps combine into an even layer. We can still build it up, but it requires lifting up the stylus and starting another stroke. Let's apply a stamp to the brush. Tap on the plus icon and choose your preferred import source. You can use basically any type of raster image for this, including a photograph or things drawn in concepts, but it's recommended to use high contrast or black and white images for best results. It's fine to use colored images as the editor will convert them into grayscale for you, but it's good to have a completely black or white background at this stage. Stamps can be up to 1024 pixels square, but we only recommend high pixel counts if you're planning to use the brush at very large sizes. For brushes used at narrower widths, we recommend square stamp sizes in either 256 or 512 pixels to save memory and increase performance. Here are some stamps I created earlier. These are just simple transparent PNGs at 512 pixels. Concepts is unique in its ability to add up to nine different stamps that appear in a random order along the path you draw. This can give a lot of organic variation to your brush. The icon of your brush is based on the first one you add. Tapping on a stamp gives you the additional options to invert the colors, as well as a button for deleting the stamp. Grain is used to add texture to a brush. The same size and format recommendations apply, and it's usually preferred to use so-called seamless textures, depending on the effect you're going for. If I choose a regular image and scale the grain down a bit, you can clearly see how the image is repeated both vertically and horizontally in tiles. With seamless textures, the connection between the tiles align, so it's harder to notice the repetition. It's relatively easy to make your own, and there are plenty of tutorials for this online. Of course, there are ready-made seamless textures available if you need a quicker solution. The grain can also be inverted and deleted with a tap. Finally, below the preview, there's a checkbox that controls whether the grain is applied to each stroke individually or if it remains in a fixed position. I'll leave this unchecked with the brush type set to stamp and show you the differences on canvas. I'll do a single stroke, a single stroke that overlaps, and several strokes that overlap, and you can see how the texture starts building up, as well as the opacity of the brush. Here I have made the same brush with the same settings, except I've checked the box which lines up the grain. Once again, I'll do a single stroke and a single stroke that overlaps, and everything looks the same. But when I do several strokes on top of one another, the grain retains its position. Here are the same samples using the reveal type brush, and the effect is almost the same, except with this, the opacity doesn't build up with a single stroke. You can clearly see the difference between aligned and non-aligned grains once I start moving things around. 